Right, so this... You know what, I'm gasping for a cup of tea. A couple of cafes over there look nice. Should some dick in long. Oh, Mellor's Coffee Shop. Exactly, <laughs> we're in Romley at Mellor's. Mellor's of Romley. <laughs> in we go. Here we go. Hey. A special two pints with Will and Ralph because we're not having any pints. We're going to have a cup of tea or something. Cup of tea and coffee. Explain we're... to our viewers why we're going to have a cup of tea well, and not a pint. Well, we are in Mellors. This is my sister's cafe um, in uh, Romley. Yeah. Um, how long have you had this cafe, Shez? Uh, 14 years. 14 years. She's had this cafe 14 years, um, and yeah, it's right in the middle of Romley. She's um, just about staying afloat, but she's not got no customers today because we've kicked them out to do this. <laughs> yeah. She had to give it us for free. But it's really nice because, you know, it's like we're, I mean, uh, oh, we you go. know, my family cafe in Romley. Here we go. Here Here's she is. Thanks. Cake. Cheers, Cheers. Yeah, this coffee. is my sister, Ooh. Cheryl. That's your oat milk latte. That's my oat milk latte, thank you. Veganuary. Cheers, Cheers. What, uh, <clears throat> what cake have you ordered? That is, where's my piece on top? Have you nicked my bleeding piece of orange? What is it? It's an orange cake thing. Have you nicked the bleeding orange cake? Have you nicked What's the pissing the orange, orange bit on the top? What is it? Have you nicked me bleeding orange? What orange bit? There's like a piece a, of orange on no, the top. No, there's like a Terry's chocolate, chocolate orange that was on the top. Well, you've got that, haven't you? You've no, ate it. No, I have not. Oh, I don't know whether we did or not. Right. Thank you very much. Well, um, hey, cheers, look cheers. At this. Go away quickly. Delicious <laughs> piece of. <laughs> Delicious half a piece of cake from Cheryl. Oh my god. Hey, thanks for bringing us over. <laughs> she could have done her hair or something now, couldn't she? <laughs> Cheers, Shares. That's my sister Cheryl. Thank you. Yeah, no, we're in Mellows, um, and it's because, <clears throat> as I say, we've. Um, <clears throat> I grew up round here in yeah. Bredbury and spent. <clears throat> yeah. You bastard. <laughs> what do you mean? You nicked me bleeding chocolate orange segments off me pissing cake. About half an hour ago, and it's taking you this <laughs> long to notice. That's your favourite bit. It in the, I know. Give it I here. Wrap, I wrapped it in there to keep it safe and everything. Oh. I was like, I hope it doesn't melt, it'll be furious. Anyway, tell me about this cafe. No. Yeah. So, uh, above here, there's a theatre called, um, that was a, a Romney Forum, right? Mm -hmm. And I was on stage there when I was a kid, like proper young. Um, what my first everything I did really, playing a little toy soldier, Nutcracker of the Mouse King. And, uh, <clears throat> and then this space... Just above here? Just above here. I'll show you in a bit. Should we go up and have a look after this? Yeah. All right. We'll go. And it's a um, lovely little theatre. So Ian McKellen's been there and all that. Anyway, we, uh, this space opened up below uh, and uh, my sister wanted to open a cafe. Um, and here we are. And then this is it. It's been 14 years. It's been here. And it's great, man. Pe loads of people come in from all over uh, around here and sit and have a chat. And it's, uh, yeah, it's lovely. It's a lovely little community cafe. Uh, I mean, it's really lovely. Um, obviously, this isn't part of it. We brought this with us. Yeah. But, um, but this <coughs> is a part of it. What? <laughs> <laughs> no. What's up with that? Well, I mean, what's going on with your barnet, for one thing? I don't You're know. You've got a hair transplant. <coughs> You've got less. You've got more weird hair transplant hair there than you have now, and that's about 15 years ago. Well, it was a long time ago when we opened it, um, me and our sister. You look every inch like a sex offender. <laughs> you can't say <laughs> you I'm not really like a do. sex offender. You really do. You really do. That coat's like a proper Mac. I love that coat. I don't know what's happened to it. It got confiscated by the police. <laughs> <laughs> as, evidence. As evidence. No, no, yeah. it's, it's good, yeah, and it's, you know what's weird? It's weird being with you where I grew up. Well, I, you told me about this cafe. Yeah. For well, years and years, and you opened it, what, 14, 15 years ago? Mm. So I, we were working together when you said, oh, my sister's opening a cafe, mm. and it's going to be... And so I've always had a mental image of what this place is for 15 years, and it's like, really, it's great to actually finally see it, and see where you're from. So, so this, this theatre that you were in, yeah. upstairs, mm. what, you said it was your first ever stage debut. What yeah. Did, what did you do? It was, a, it was a thing, right? It was, I don't know, they advertised for it, and it was... Um, <clears throat> It was like a, a play up on, a, on the ballet, the Nutcracker. Well, they called it Nutcracker and the Mouse King. Were you, the, I, ma were you the Mouse King? No, I was one of the pissing toy soldiers in a, in a box in the corner. <laughs> with a pair of pissing tights on and rosy red cheeks. Uh, and uh, do you know what? <laughs> and the, the audition, right? I, you had to audition to be a toy soldier? <laughs> <laughs> wow. And you know what I had to do? You know them plies where you have to jump? Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, there are loads of professional ballerinas in there warming up, limbering up, got the legs up, they're bleeding in the air, leaning against the wall, and I turn up in a pair of pissing shorts and trainers. What, uh, what did you have to do? I should just jump around a bit. What, you had to do, like, ballet dancing? 
Well, I couldn't do ballet. I'd never done anything. So, so I, what did you have to I do? I just faked it a bit, I suppose. I just had to jump around a bit. Fake it. Well, that's a bit of this, that. that. <laughs> just a bit of the old jumpy jumpy. <laughs> I believe that's a ballet term. Well, look, okay, pas de pas de beret, like, jumpy jumpy. Do you know what I think it was? I think there was only three boys that turned up and they needed three soldiers, so they had to give me the bleeding part. <laughs> anyway, I'll tell you a bit. When we go up there, I'll talk to you about what happened. All right, yeah, we'll but, see. Uh, it. <clears throat> but yeah, it's, um, no, it's good. And as I say, growing up around here, you know, it's just a normal place. Um, loads of memories. Mm. And it's nice. Did you like growing up around here? I know that's a weird question because you don't have any choice where you grow up. Mm. But looking back now, are you like, yeah, it was a great place to be raised as a kid. It was a great place to be a kid. Well, just, or is I, it just I, I want it? to ask you this as well. W would you want to be a kid now or when we were kids? Do you know this, how the difference is? That's a good question. As we were driving here, it's funny you should say that. Yeah. Saw a couple of kids on the way home from school. And it's a slightly different, it's a slightly different answer to the question you asked, but I'll get there. Like, and as these kids were coming home from school, and they were all like cold and wrapped in their school uniform and walking back. I was thinking, God, I wouldn't want to be a kid again. It was yeah. miserable. You're always walking, always cold, and always working. It sucks. Well, I wouldn't want to do that at all. But in answer to that question. Like with technology in that now, would you want to well, be a kid with everything they've got at their fingertips? Or like we were kids. And it's we a just... difficult one because things are better now in terms of technology. Like you can access information, like so cool. I mean, Christ, remember how difficult it was to get hold of a porn mag? Jesus Christ, there's none of that problem anymore, is there? <laughs> <laughs> no, think about it, right? You're 13, you're desperate just for a look at like half a boob. Anything will do. And you're, you're, you're hoping to find some sort of absolute rancid like piece of like stuck together nonsense <laughs> in the woods or on top of a wardrobe. In the woods? Why but did you always find porn mags in the woods? <laughs> it was weird, you know, You'd go for a shit in the yeah. woods and then you'd find Hold on, wait, hold on. Why are we shitting in the woods now? <laughs> well, you never shit in the woods. I mean, I'm not a bear or the Pope. No, but you've never shit in the woods. If I'm camping or like, or I'm, I'm like- You did camping? What? You did camping? Don't say it like, it's like <laughs> I tortured animals. Yes, I did camping. <laughs> camping? Yes, I went camping <laughs> sometimes. But if you go camping, sometimes you have to like, you know, nature calls or whatever and there's not, but like, why are you just randomly, are you shitting in the woods around Romilly? Well, yeah, we used to. It was just Rather if back I, of Breadbury Hall. If it was, play, if it was a I long... used to play football there. That's where I got spotted for Hyde United. And it, in that corner <laughs> flag, that's where I popped off for a shit. If well, the woods well, weren't available. If, if it was a long game of hide and seek, <laughs> and, and you were, and you thought I can't get found, and so I'll just shit where I'm hiding. Well, yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> I don't want to get found. Well, here we go. Oh. Preferably, preferably, oh, well, I'll live with that because I don't want to lose this preferably, game. Preferably near a dot leaf. Do you ever know that's the one thing you use if you're shitting woods is a dot leaf? Do you know that? Uh, why? I don't know. But everyone said, do you ever have a shit in the woods? Dot leaves, you think? Aren't you thinking about dot leaves if you get stung by nettles? Maybe you're I the, am. I think you are, yeah. But yeah. aren't they long and, and sort of wide and... Can, I mean, there's can, enough, can, there's cover quite enough a, can cover quite area. a good circumference. There's not enough area. surface area on it for an arse as big as mine, but you might be all right. No, but you know, it was it was true. You used to always find. We, that's the thing about when we were kids. You'd, well, have, adve you were saying, you'd have adventures. When you went for a shit in the woods, which apparently was a very common <laughs> thing. <laughs> right. So every time you were shitting <laughs> in the woods, you'd find a porn mag. Well, no, there was just some bits. That's what I'm trying to say is when you when we were younger, you got up to more stuff. There was more adventures. Like there was. We, you went out and did stuff because you, you, you had, had to time, make your own entertainment. Make your own fun. We were talking about it earlier, the number of games, your Kirby, uh, what did you call it, Rallyo. Kit Ed, Count. All, Kit Count, all sorts of versions of hide and seek yeah. and all that kind of thing. Yeah, we you used just to, had to make your own entertainment. We used to do the, yeah, the Grand National. Did you ever try and build a treehouse, which was basically just one plank of wood nailed into it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Where's 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 where you'd see American films, it's like, we have a treehouse, and you're like, that's amazing. It's, it's got, got electricity a window, and shit. A roof and, everything. and our treehouse, I had two bits of wood nailed together that you could sort of stand on and nearly die. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. fell out of a tree once and knocked myself unconscious. Did you? It, yeah, it was, I was, um, I was up a tree, you know, when you, what, what was it with kids? Climbing trees. Can you imagine climbing a tree now? No. You look at it and go, oh, that looks high. <laughs> exactly. That looks like a lot of effort. And I'm slippery. And do kids do that anymore? Do the Don't kids know. go out and? Because I, I think one thing about when we were kids, you had time to. There, there was time to be. There was time to be bored. Like kids don't have time to get bored now because you're being entertained all the time. You got, do you think that's a good thing? No, I think the it's a bad have, thing. I think you have, should learn to be bored. You think and come you should up with, be able to entertain yourself. Well, be creative and make up games and like I was telling you before the game we used to play cops v fans where you literally you just end up fighting. Talk, talk me through for the listeners 
cops v fans because just to be clear we didn't have this <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought it was a national thing <laughs> that's no past so we'd go into the woods or whatever it was and, and you'd have say oh, there's 14 of you or something or, and you'd say right we'll play cops v fans and you'd split up into t into two groups and then you'd work out who was the cops and who was the fans the fans would run off into the woods and the cops would try and find the fans and if you found the fans you beat them up <laughs> <laughs> and and if the fans, if you if some fans saw the, the coppers beating the fan up, they could jump on the coppers, and it just ended up in a match. So essentially, you're describing a game in which about 20 young lads kick the shit out of each other. <laughs> <laughs> but there's structure to it, it so it's a game. It wasn't as bad as kicking the shit out of it. You, you might get a kick in the bollocks, or a, you know, a, oh, right, a right, dead right, leg, just a, just a bit or, between friends. Or the tree wedgie, which was they grab you, they grab both your legs and pull your balls into the tree. That was no, that, no, that's not. Something you didn't ever I've, play that. No, I've never played that. It was a bit rough when no, I got. That's, that's not for me, Will. Thank you. Yeah, we, we did that. And, and just also, like, why is it called Cops v Fans? Is it like football fans? And cops that's what it's about. Yeah, shit how they used to, how, in the 80s, you know, they used to, the fans and the police used to all fight. Well, that was <laughs> where. I mean, it, that's a dark game on every level, including its naming. Yeah, I mean, did you play? You must have played games and stuff when you were a kid. I mean, I guess, but I was. I, I was always out like. So, you know how you had your. Uh, your the theatre upstairs that you were doing? Mm. So. And it's funny what you say about being bored. Like, my mum, who's... My mum's <laughs> always been quite eccentric, and she had this idea in her head that she was like, we were never allowed to be bored. We were never going to have a chance to be bored. So I'd finish school, right, and I'd get off the school bus, and then I'd be straight to football training, and then straight after that, I'd go to swimming. I'd, my sisters would be off to whatever dance, whatever they were doing, and then we'd all go and do swimming together. That was Monday. <laughs> then Tuesday night, it'd be, like, some other training, then Wednesday night. So, like, I was always just... In the evenings, it was, like, sport, and then try and avoid doing homework or whatever. So yeah. I never, and then Saturdays it was like, play, play for the school, play football for the school, and then Saturday afternoons was um, drama group. So I never really much had that kind of, that thing where like, me and all the kind of neighborhood kids had to just go and entertain ourselves. And I actually, I actually miss, I wish, it, I wish I'd had a bit more chance to do that. Because yeah. I think sort of f finding ways to entertain yourselves and being part of that, I mean, I got to socialize amongst loads of different groups, playing with my football team and the this and the that and the other. But like, never just like me and like the neighbourhood kids just hanging out in that way. Yeah, that's what I mean about what, the, the, what I was talking about before is being a kid now. <clears throat> obviously, you know, you, you always say it was better in my day and all that. And I think sometimes you're right, sometimes you're wrong. But I just think the technology now it stops your brain from having to do anything or, come, or be creative for kids. You know, you sort of it's all too your easy. Your brain doesn't really do a lot anyway, <laughs> though, does it? To be fair, you oh. don't sit. It's not like you're sitting going. Hmm, philosophy. No, but creativeness for kids is important and coming up with games and stuff. And I mean, when's the last time you got stung by nettles? Kids don't do that anymore. We used to, we used to always come in and be stung by nettles because you'd be out playing. And you forgot that dock leaves are what you were supposed to and use. You were wiping your ass with them. Especially if, you have, if you're curling one out. <laughs> don't go anywhere near nettles. <laughs> nettles things on the balls don't work. So wait, is your, is your, is your contention here that, that ty it was better when we were kids? Because you used to get stung by nettles more. <laughs> no, but do you know what I'm saying? Playing out and coming no, in I just smelling the cold. I, I used to say... smell a fire every time I come in. Yeah, Mum used I, to say, you've I been do... in there a fire, went, I haven't. Yeah, I, do know I what used you to mean. say, I can smell it on you. I know. I used to just make fires. Do you know what you mean, though? Like, the number of, like, chase games you'd play or whatever, and then you'd come back and you'd just be like, right, get the TCP or the anti sand I'm coming in nettles all up my legs. You just lived with it. My mum used to shout me, and uh, my mates used to all impersonate him because I had a long name. She'd, because it was William, obviously, my mum called me. <laughs> so if we were out playing football, she'd come to the edge of the estate and go, William! What, like, like from The um, uh, Lion King? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 no, <laughs> yeah, William! And she'd go, you change all the time! <laughs> all, the, all the lads would go, William! <laughs> They should get you home and just lift you over the house like that. And everyone was like, eat your tea. Akuna Matata, mother. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, yeah. I mean, good. I mean, I loved growing up because I suppose that's all you know. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's good when you, when you, especially if you don't have much. You know, right, you, let you, me you, ask you a question then, based on the question you asked me. Go on. Instead of saying about growing up now or growing up then, let's talk about your kids. Yeah. Do you think that your kids have had a better, ch no, a better childhood's not right because that implies that you didn't, but like, They've had a very different childhood because they're different circumstances. Mm. Who do you think had it better, you or your kids? I think I had more fun. Really? 100%. Really? My daughter don't come out of a room. She'll <laughs> sit in a room, she'll come home from school, barely even say hello, off upstairs, and then she's on her phone with her friends. I know like, I'm a father and I can stop that, but it's, that's the problem is now is, if you say to your kids, 
You've been on that phone all day. If you take them off that, that's their social network. Mm. So if she's, she's not involved in the conversation, she's not involved in... Cause, yeah. And when they play games now, it's not like we used to play, you know, you, you play on your, in your game console when you were a kid and it would just be you. Now it's a social network, so they've got their headphones on, they're talking while they're playing. Yeah. It's all part of it. And if you take them away from that, because they don't go out. Yeah. Don't, remember when you used to be a kid and you go, knock on the door, can Ben play out? No yeah. one knocks on my door uh, and says, yeah. can Renee play out? Yeah, There's none of that it. anymore. Can't imagine it now. So, so I think I ate better because I had more adventures. Yeah. You go out and, and, and every day you just, you go out and your mum would have to shout you in. But now I can't get them out. How did shout you in? <laughs> <laughs> can we get one from over in the corner? <laughs> My mother's here. My mum's here today in the Let's cafe. Let's hear one. <laughs> Told you. That threw him so much. Millionaire shortbread just spilled all out his golf. I, I nearly ran he on. He shit himself. Oh, mum, I'm coming. I nearly ran on. <laughs> Jumpers for goal poles. That's a bit of my jumper up, ruin the goal. You play a lot of, you must have played a lot of football as a kid. Yeah, we... Jumpers used... for goal poles. I mean, I always think that people who don't have that, um, who don't I just love playing football or, or aren't interested in playing football, it's such an easy, especially when you're a kid, like, my, you, your body gets older and you can't do it to keep fit anymore because, like, your knees go or whatever. But, like, playing football is such an easy cheat. All you need is a ball and, like, two things to make, it, to make a goal. Yeah. And people are like, oh, how, you never go to the gym. How did you stay fit for years? And I was like, because I just play football all the time because it's not an exercise to me. And I always, but when you were a kid, you used to be able to play for eight hours straight. Yeah. And not get tired. No, no. <laughs> and another thing as well, when we were younger, people could give you a crack. Like, oh, yeah. someone would say, hey, and hit you around the ear hole, and then go on and say, he's hit me, and my dad hit me and say, well, you must have been doing something wrong then. <laughs> he's like, you can't do that. <laughs> things Your dad would give you one for luck. Yeah, well, you must have done something wrong. You know, things like, you know, thing, things like you don't see white dog shit anymore. Where's that gone? <laughs> no, I know. I used to think it was white dogs that did it. I used to think white dogs did white dog shit. And I did, it was years until I realised it was just the fact that our streets were that dirty that no one cleaned the dog shit that it went to turn to white dog shit. And do you ever do this? When you'd have a stone fight, you'd pick it up thinking it was a stone and it'd crumble in your hand. It goes to throw it in, it'd just be dust. You go, it's dog shit! I'm going to look that up. Where is white dog shit? Yeah. And I think what it is is our streets are cleaner. Did you ever play Unga Bunga? Or what? was that another Unga thing? Unga Bunga? Did you ever play that? Please don't tell me this is going to be a racist thing. <laughs> Why would it be racist? It just sounded like but you were heading that way. <laughs> no. I don't know. No. I don't know what it's Unga Bunga is. It's a bit of shit on a stick. It was clay. If you could find clay, it was great for Unga Bunga. So you'd go to a... You'd see an house, honest to God. If anyone did this to my house now, I'd go absolute <laughs> mental. You'd get, a, you'd get like a stick, like a cane. When it does that... You know that noise when you... Yeah. Do the noise again. A, Okay. I, do you know what? I didn't think I could do a stick noise until now. <laughs> now you I'm know. quite impressed at myself. <laughs> there you go. So you get a bit of clay on the end, and then you go, unga bunga, and you, and you unga bunga it at, the, at someone's house, and you basically cover their house in shit. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. OK. So I was worried it was going to go in a really revolting, a terrible direction. No, but clay mainly. it went in a different, revolting, terrible shit. direction. Not dog shit, but do you know, like mud and clay. Oh, good. We would literally <laughs> pepper this person's a whole house. Nice. Seriously, I mean, nowadays, could you imagine? Honestly, the stories you've t you're telling me about, like growing up around here, you sound like you sound like just a, a little like, shit, filthy, <laughs> filthy little grubby, <laughs> horrible little urchin. I used to Speaking love fires. Which, what? We, we, we've had this story a few times, but um, <clears throat> since since your mother's in the corner, what? <laughs> and your sister, I'd like you to talk me through. Auntie Anne. What about Auntie Anne? You know about Auntie Anne. What about her? You know very well what about Auntie Anne. You talk, <laughs> I can hear him laughing in the corner. Yeah, his mum's going, don't tell the Auntie Anne story. Come on, I want to hear about Auntie Anne. Well, you it... know very well the story. Tell me the Auntie Anne story and I'll reward you with an answer about white dog poo. Well, it was a little, when I was a little kid, I used to put pencils in me willy, right? <laughs> But listen, that's not, not, that's not, no, not like, that's not, not an opening not, statement you, that you're going to get past without, without review. I'll explain. So I pulled my foreskin like off the end of the pencil. Like those boogaloos you so, told me about. So it dangled down and I'd swing it around a bit. I never had much clothes on when I was young, I don't know why. Oh God. And I, and I was obsessed with it. I'd even stand at the window, just shaking the, the, the willy and the, the pencil, just at passing neighbours, <laughs> frightening old women. I mean, it was, my mum's told me, my sisters have told me. It's terrible. And then... 
And then I was doing it once and I obviously pulled the pencil out and my Auntie Anne was sat on the couch and I straddled her and I went, have a sniff of me dick, Auntie Anne. <laughs> and she went, Shirley! And <laughs> my mum's in the corner laughing her head off. Well, she's laughing and she's also got her head in her hands. Mother, is it a true story? She's, she's nodding. nodding. <laughs> What have you got? One of life's big questions, but the mystery of why we no longer see white dog poo anymore is insane. You <laughs> Googled it. Yeah, I Googled it. <laughs> Most of us feel it feels like these white wonders disappeared around the late 80s or early 90s. Told you, dog shit, white dog shit. It also coincides with some significant changes in dogs and families' lives and lifestyles. The big one, dog food changed. And what we used to consider dog food used to be like full of like crappy uh, meat and now and, and processed stuff and it was high in bone it was high in bone marrow and like bone off products and stuff so what would happen apparently is the dog poo like would sort of you know the the color and the organic matter in it would like leach away and what you'd be left with was like a crumbly bony deposit and that's why it was white and we don't really so it wasn't it. just old dog shit no we don't i thought it was old moldy well, dog still shit. old there's still old dog shit around but it never turns white does it so there you go it's well, because when we go. were through we changed what we fed them now you know well, there you go. Ralph's answers. Come to Ralph's grotto for answers. And two Will's, for, Will's Will, for an autograph. Two parties of Will and Ralph talking shit. <laughs> Literally, Literally talking, talking shit. shit. Oh. So go on, what are you asking me? What do you want to know? No, about... Because, you know, I'm talking about when I was growing up and playing out and doing things and, you know, coming up with uh, adventures and games. But you, you grew up in a different place to me. Because mine was very much council estate, out and about, getting up to no good without getting into too much trouble. You know, and that, Your uh, Honor. No, but you know what I mean. Mom. You know what I mean. Yeah. What was yours like? Because you, you were a bit more middle class, weren't you? Well, I was sort of brought up with middle class values, but working class money. Right. <laughs> so I was, fu I was fucked both ways. Right. <laughs> I was like, we didn't have a lot of money, but like um, a lot of expert. I always say like teachers' kids. Teachers' kids are a good example. Like they don't actually have a lot of money, but teachers' kids are often brought up with kind of like a middle class sensibility. Um, and I spent. The second half of my, so from when I was, up to when I was 10, lived in one place in Bury, and then the second half, from when I was 10 to like, till I, till I left uh, to move to London. I lived on a, a farm, uh, it wasn't a working farm, we weren't like farming cows or anything. So you, wasn't, you didn't have to milk cows and shit? No, <coughs> but, but I had to do all sorts of shit that I hated. Like what? Like, you didn't have to put your hand up a cow's ass. I mean, I don't, just at weekends, just for fun, <laughs> but like I didn't, <laughs> I didn't have to, nobody made me. <laughs> I just, you know, you just got to entertain yourself. You know, you used to play Kirby. Yeah. <laughs> well, when you were running around with a pencil in your dick, I was jamming my hand in cow's ass. <laughs> While we were cow yeah. pushing. And then I used to play Unga Bunga by just lobbing it at a house. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, so, so I used to do a load of shit that I hated. Um, it was always freezing, and so we had chickens, and I, had to, I was always the one who had to go and lock them up at night. And you know what, you, it's like, it goes dark and it's freezing, you don't want to walk halfway down a field. It sounds like old boo-hoo, but it was scary as shit. You'd watch a, like a werewolf film or whatever, you don't want to go walking out into the middle of a field. Did you kill the chickens? On your own. Did I kill the chickens? What, what did you eat them? To get Was eggs. that what they for? Oh, to, yeah. You don't get very many eggs. There you are. One egg, everyone. Kill it. Next. <laughs> How did you eat don't the chickens? Don't go into farming. Oh. You're not going to make meant, any money off it. It was just for eggs. Yeah, yeah, we just have chickens for eggs. But also we had, um, we had to, like, there were people who kept horses at our gaff um, because, like, we had these run-down, knackered old stables and my parents were like, ooh, we can make a little bit of cash off that. They not just stink of shit yeah. all the time. Yeah, all the time. It was rubbish. It was rubbish. Did you smell of shit? Oh, yeah, of course. So I mean, was you, so you, was you the me. smelly kid at school? I still do. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, still, that's what, because what, you're vegan now and you was, shit yourself on a regular basis. Snoopy, pig pen. That's true. Yeah. What, because so, I'm vegan? Because I keep shitting my pen? Well, it's true, isn't it? You were telling me the other day, there's one thing about... Remember vegan. when Russell Howard said to us? Yeah. In the podcast. <laughs> this was like a, a few couple of weeks ago we filmed this and he went, I mean, guys, I mean, have you ever... I'd say two of the worst moments of my life. It's only have happened twice, but uh, do, you, do you ever... Uh, have you ever like shit your pants as an, as adult, an adult? As an adult, <laughs> and me and you, without hesitation, both went, "Oh yeah, yeah all the time." <laughs> yeah. And Russell goes, "Really? I've only done it twice." Tom, our cameraman, went, "Never, <laughs> never." Slightly <laughs> disgusted. And here's what's weird: is I looked at him and I went, Tch, "Weirdo." <laughs> 
<laughs> We're the ones who are dropping all over the cap. It's, yeah. it's true, isn't it? I mean, you think about it, because I, I always joke about you, I've said to you before about when you do play the pranks on people where you, you rim your arsehole and you stick it around a pint yeah, glass. Please stop telling me about this and, prank. And you it's go, the saddest thing I've ever My pint smell funny and, you, and you've got shit on your finger. Well, a no, bit, I've never a bit, done Not that. shit, but a bit of resin. Bum, and then you, bum resin, is that what we're talking about? A bit of bum resin. <laughs> okay. and, then you, and then you all offer it and they go, Ugh. Well, yeah, I've never done that. I, I, there's different, I've done it a few times, right, Have to different you? people. I got my mum once, right? <laughs> <Wait. laughs> and she what? fell out with me. What? You dirty girl! She threw me out of the kitchen. What? <laughs> what? What? What are you laughing at? <laughs> what are you laughing at? Don't just say, I got my mum once. <laughs> yeah, I did, yeah. Like it's the most normal sense. <laughs> she fell out with me. Ha okay. So, Describe how you got your mum with it and then describe her reaction. Well, it, I, do you know what? The, my sisters used to... Why are we always back to shit? I don't, I don't know what it is. Because I used, to, I used to think that'll be funny. You know, just to see the reactions. And I got a few people... My dad used to say, I will punch you. I will... I'll, don't bring that shit finger near me. And he'd go mad, right? Because he could smell it. Right? So I... I, 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 I bet I, Auntie Anne lived in a state of fear, <laughs> didn't she? <laughs> I've already had the one go. She never recovered from the dick in her face. So, uh, yeah, so... Um, no, I think I, 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 you obviously you have to creep up on the person, oh, so obviously. they don't see you coming. Oh, obviously, and then and then uh, that would be amateurish so otherwise. You, so you, you give it a bit of a, a bit of a, the ring, the rub of the ring, right? A little bit, a bit of resin. Okay, I, Prefer, so, if you've been for a jog, it's better. <laughs> but no, I've but got I'll ask you, Will. Are you are you going are you are you going in the ring no, or just around the no, ring? No, I'm, I'm not an animal. So, so you're a gentleman. <laughs> you're a gentleman. <laughs> and it's my mother, so I went easy you know on her. We talked about maybe one day one of us might get to play James Bond. <laughs> it's, it's not, not, not happening. <laughs> not happening. Carry on. And then I crept up behind her, and and I just sort of wiped my finger on the top lip there like that. You and just she, she went, hey! So, so let's be clear, it was like a reach around the front, and then a... I just went like that. I just a bit of a. Right. I said, you dirty bleeder. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, ah, just shit, get, get out! It went mad, right? And then she's going, <laughs> brruh, 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 trying to watch you <laughs> Try not to lick it. <laughs> right, yeah. and my dad said, do that to me, I'll kill you. My dad's not like not joking. But I got me, me, me brother-in-law with it. Hold I, on, we're not moving on from that yet. You what? said she fell out with you. Yeah, she For just how fell long out. and how did that manifest well, she itself? Never, she never and why is she still talking to you now? Well, you know, cause, you know I think she sees the funny side of it afterwards. How long ago was this? It was a, a long time ago. ago. It was a while back. I remember, I remember I told Michelle about it and she was disgusted. She went, I cannot believe you did that to your own mother. I was, listen, we, you know, it was, is this true? Can we hear from Will's Yeah, she's is not true, Mom? again. I'm afraid to say it is. <laughs> you're an absolute, you're an absolute disgrace. Hello, Ryan. See, my mum's here now. <laughs> so, I, I mean... Yeah, I'm all right, So, I'm, <laughs> you can't, you're, you're, you're not in a shot. But, but you look fabulous. <laughs> So, so, so far we've heard about poor old Auntie Anne and having yeah. a nervous breakdown and you having a shit wiped on your top yeah, lip like, like the lucky lady you are. Yeah, I was in the kitchen doing my washing. <laughs> 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 oh my God. So this, is, this is burned into her memory. So what else? You gave me Anne in, yeah. didn't expect anything. No, see. well why would you? <laughs> Maybe a hug. Maybe a hug. I love you, Mum. Yeah, yeah. So you had that on my lip, but I'm like, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> it sticks of shit in here. <laughs> so I chased him with the dog lead. <laughs> with the dog did lead? Yeah, did you? She used to with the dog lead. Yeah, she used to get the dog lead on me and hit me with it. the dog lead with a chain on the end. <laughs> <laughs> did you get him? <laughs> I used to, there was only one door in the house that locked, so the bathroom door, you remember? Yeah. There was only one lock on it, I was in there. You have to, the you'll have to come I'm out! Kill you you <laughs> I'll kill you when you come down. <laughs> But you're like, wait till your dad gets home. Remember, there was one time, your mum, your mum, I used because there was things I used to like. We had, I found a horse's whip once, right? You know them. I'm yeah. doing that again. That sounds bad. <laughs> was it? Was it like a cane? <laughs> it sounds very much like a cane. Yeah, yeah. So I found this green horse's whip, and I, so I thought, well, I have to whip my sister with it, because <laughs> what, she, what <laughs> would you think? Just that? because she <laughs> thought, I wonder what that feels like, and I went. I hit my sister with it. Same she screamed. Way. So my mum then got it and she chased me with it. But we had a dog called Sam and he used to sleep near the fire with his whip it. It was it was half dead for a long time. <laughs> you it told just me wouldn't about die. Poor old Sam. Right, and it, and she's run round, chased me around the table, and as I get round, she stands on the dog and the dog bites her ankle. <laughs> and she falls over and smashes her head on the cabinet. <laughs> and she's like, I'm gonna kill you! <laughs> 
Oh, I, no. I think this is it. It's gone up another level now. Because A, I think my sister with the horse whip. Yeah, I mean, there's quite a lot going on there. And then my mum's tripped over the dog that's bit her on the ankle, and then she's banged her head on the, on the cabinet. Yeah. And I'm off to the only to one the going in the bathrooms. I thought, I'm going to have to sit this one out. It'll be a few hours. I'm picturing you <laughs> sitting in that bathroom quite a lot, quite on a number of occasions, it was, it for didn't... quite some time, and each time going, I've done it now. Yeah. I've done it now, I'm in trouble. Yeah. And what happened? Did you calm down? I have to after so long because he, he, he just waited yeah. you out. But yeah. What was it like as a child, mother, as a young boy? Very loving, really. Especially you to Auntie Anne. Like, oh. <laughs> you should pull all your skin. Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. But he's a very loving child. Can you imagine. Can just you... stopped his sister with a weird. Yeah. Well, that's <laughs> what I mean. Like, can you imagine a world. Where like Jaden might ever find a horse whip and go and whack Renee in yes, the back of the legs. Yes, hundred percent. Really? Look at well, he Jaden won. sounds a little more sensible than you were. That his brother and sister thing. You know what I mean? She was the youngest of me in age, so we used to fight like cat and dog quite a lot. She was six years older, so she was the closest to. She was the closest to me in age, so we used to, you know, siblings do that, don't they? So there was a gap of six years, but you had a few, you, a few siblings, four, four, sisters, four sisters, then a gap of six years, and then you. Yeah. Accident. <laughs> <laughs> Hey. I think she was. Hey, she... hey, press that in. Am I right? <laughs> Come on. Come on. You can tell That's me. That's what my dad said. <laughs> <laughs> press that in. After, you, after you'd wiped her with a whip, he went, You were an accident! No, it Not was... really press that in. Did I just guess that right? No, I'm joking. Oh, I'm right. saying my dad said press that in. <laughs> <laughs> She's sitting here. It's a joke. It's Stop a joke. Doing... Don't it's be a doing... joke. Banging puns well, your mom, about your mother. Well, we, it was. Um, I, I, I remember I had <laughs> loads of energy as a kid. I was always all over the place. Loads Never of energy. Never still. No. Never still. Like if you I, still listen. I still. I'm not still. No. Uh, yeah, I know. I know. He gets a phone call. He's up and knocking. All right. All right. <laughs> do you do you think? Listen. So I've known him 20 oh, years, right? Yeah. Um, and I think I don't think you'll mind me saying this. He's he's got worse in terms of like. <laughs> In terms of, he's just, he's always anxious about everything, this lad now. Yeah. In a way that he didn't used to be. Like when no, we were, right. when we were young kids, I was like 22 when we were working together. He was like yeah. 35, whatever he was. And, uh, <laughs> and 25, were you probably? You I'm, 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 old, I'm four years older than you, right? So you've been 26. So I was, no, we started younger, didn't we? 20. Are you 41? Yeah. Yeah. I'm so, so when we did, so about 20, mid, mid 20s, early 20s, right? And, we were kind of, because it was a different time when we were lads and we were young, like everything seemed a bit happy-go-lucky. He frets about everything now. He's basically turned into a little old lady. You should try coming I out doing this podcast with him. I don't he's fret. always going, oh, what, what happens if this don't work? What happens if we don't have anything? The number of times he'll go, you saw him today before we started this. What happens if we don't have anything to talk about? Yeah, it's like, exactly. well, yeah. we do this. We talk for two hours and then go, Christ, we didn't even talk about anything we thought we were yeah, going to. Yeah, but I've about it every time. Be, be, because yeah. we haven't got any typical subjects to talk about today, I've resorted to talking about shit in my mother. What? Which I didn't want to bring up. What do you mean? Put it's forced out of me. Can I just say, it doesn't matter what we've got planned, this is always what we talk about. <laughs> Don't pretend it. it's like, well, actually, we had some politics. Hmm, <laughs> weren't the parties at Downing Street a real problem? <laughs> I wiped shit on me mother's top lip. <laughs> always, always. Uh, I'll tell you another so thing. So do you think he's got more anxious as he's got older? Yeah. Is that I think fair? Once you get children as well, you get more anxious about it. Really? But Ralph won't know about that. He's got a PlayStation. Yeah, That's why, all he's got. Why do you think I'm so chill? He's going to give me shit. I'm having a great time. <laughs> yeah. Well, don't you? So that comes with the children. I'll tell you one thing, right? When you have got kids, <clears throat> to deter, to deter your kids, you come out with, like you make stuff up, like you, you know, you, you have to lie a little bit. My mum used to terrify us all with Icky the eyeball scratcher. Icky the eyeball scratcher. Yeah, talk she, to me. She'd so like, if she didn't want to go somewhere. She'd give, don't you come in here? It's dark. Come in. Icky will get you. I was like, who's it? Icky the eyeball scratcher. That's dark. How horrible is that? That's it sounds like dark. something off inside number nine. <laughs> Icky Where'd the you eyeball get that from? scratcher. Did you make that up? Yeah. Yeah. That wasn't, so, that wasn't <laughs> something passed down from your yeah. parents. My grandson who's over there, he still talks about it in the airport. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's passed on to generation after this generation. This is a real thing, <laughs> yeah. Did you tell your kids the same? Sorry? Yeah. He was in the airing cupboard. Icky the eyeball scratcher was hiding in the airing cupboard. <laughs> Icky the fucking eyeball scratcher. <laughs> it's terrifying. That, that's sort of slightly gonna. Uh, just before I go to sleep tonight, I'm gonna be like, oh, I'll check the wall. Wake, wake up in the middle of the night going, Icky! <laughs> <laughs> That is, that's dark. And you made that up. Yeah. Why eyeballs got that so visceral? I don't know. 
That's so visceral. It's not like like the bogeyman or anything. It's like like he literally just comes to just scrape your eyeballs. It, it can the eyeballs scratch you? Yeah, that's horrible. Did you pass? Did you do that to your kids? I don't think I passed that one down. No. Oh, such a shame. Is that what you used to deter him from doing anything he couldn't? Well, then it sounds like that was something that was very necessary. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. You say, nine for nine o'clock, I can die balls crack again. Oh my. So five God. to nine. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I got you home! You, Shit! You went on a swivel looking for Ricky. <laughs> and you're legging it. <laughs> trying, to, trying to go up. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> oh, that is you get in that? He can only got me then. <laughs> She's like, come on, come to mum. He's all right. He can't get you in here. Like, thanks, mum. <laughs> Remember once, me, me dad. Because when you're a kid, like you always, when you're with your, your cousin or you, I mean, me and my cousin, we're very similar in age, my cousin George. Because <laughs> I didn't have a brother, whenever he'd come over, we'd sort of try to outman each other. And it was this one time we sat it's watching pretty it. Pretty much like our tour. <laughs> but we're, we're, we're watching uh, Halloween, you know, um, um, Michael Myers, and we sat there, um, and I'm going, are you scared? No, I'm not scared, are you scared? And we're like young kids, oh, like, and, it. Me, and my dad's going, you shouldn't be watching this, you know, and, and, I, and I said, well, I'm scared, are you scared? No, we're not scared, we're not scared. Anyway, we watched the film, um, and then um, we say, we, we go upstairs to, to, to my bedroom, right, to be sleeping in my room to play, all the lights go out, electricity, and my dad's gone, flick, switched it off, and then he's coming upstairs like this. <sighs> Your dad did? <sighs> yeah. <sighs> and me and him are going, <laughs> we're looking for somewhere to hide, shaking like a shitting dog. <laughs> right? And my dad. <sighs> That's horrible. Honestly, deep, all, all the lights are, so he switched off at the mains because he's heard us arguing. I'm not scared, are you scared? Honestly, shit myself. They weren't little, they were quite big, teenagers. 15. They weren't like, <laughs> 15. It wasn't 15. <laughs> about 13. Listen, we, there was no you, pencils in Willie's, and it was, that was old enough. <laughs> yeah, did you, yeah, I never stopped laughing when he got it. Did you oh. know that Bill was going to do that? Did he tell you? No, I was in bed. Oh, you were... He came to bed laughing his head off. <laughs> he shit us right up. Yeah. I, I remember um, nothing really gave me nightmares, but there is a thing about my, my childhood. I don't know if you were, what you were, weren't allowed to watch, but basically... <laughs> My mum didn't give two shits about uh, film ratings. If, no, she'd, really? if she'd heard it was a good film, we watched it. Really? So, oh, she did, couldn't care less. And I, I, I look now and I'm like, maybe that was really irresponsible, but I think she was just like, you know, it's not real. You can judge, it's fine. Yeah. Uh, only two things scared me, which we'll get to, but I do remember. No. This tells you everything you need to know about my mum and her attitude to films, right? What we could watch. We went to Blockbuster back in the days when Blockbuster was around. In fact, it was probably even before but Simon's Video Rental in Berry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we went to Simon's Video Rental and I saw this thing. And when you were a kid, when you were a little boy, you're just looking for anything that looks like it might be action or whatever. And I saw this film and it looked really cool and I went, oh, can we watch this one? It's called Aliens. I didn't know it was an absolute Jesus, classic. Jesus, man. That's Aliens a... is a 15, right? And I was about... It should be more, really. It's scary. Six. I was, I'm a, six. six? Aliens came out in 1985, right? And Alien came out in 1979. Wow. So I was six, so it had been out a year, so I was about six, and I went, can I watch this, Aliens? And my mum went, no, you cannot. And I went, what, why? And she goes, because you can't watch that without watching the first one first, it's miles <laughs> better. <laughs> and it was an 18, and she had to order it specially. She went, have you got Alien? Because he wants to watch Aliens. They went, no, we don't have it in stock. She went, I'll order it in, pick it up in three weeks. Sat down with me and watched Alien. Do That's you, Do you miss that? Do you know, like, going to the video shop and having to select it? Do you remember that as well? You're going to a video shop, and it was out. You're like, there'd be a little piece of card on it. Yeah, and, it yeah. or and you, you have to res reserve <laughs> it for next time. Or if you, you go in and you'd say, could I have that video? Oh, it's not, let, hang on, I've just got to rewind it. And they'd have to rewind it in the shop know, before they give it you. Do you, did you. So did you, were you more strict with Will about what, what he could and couldn't watch when he was younger? I think he was quite strict on things, weren't we, on certain films? Or what I don't know, I had Commando, Cobra and Commando. Rambo on the same day. Remember you used to be out of record if you in, in long play and short play? Yeah, yeah. We'd had a go, get it in LP, so we get it long, get three films on it. Yeah. And, and we, he had one of them video libraries, you know, so it looked like a bookcase, but <laughs> yeah. there were videos, yeah. all numbered, and then you picked up the book, and if you looked for the film, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, but that was proper into all yeah, that, yeah. and you'd go through it. So I could watch. To be fair, Commando was, was pretty gory. But yeah, I mean, it, well, it's not just that. I, remember when I told you I'd kill you last? I lied. <laughs> get down, get man. Do it with Sully. Get down. Get down. Mm. All right, that's enough of that. <laughs> <laughs> but we, I could see a masses move in it. You're like having some sort of stroke. So does he. He's acting. <laughs> it's very realistic. 
Well, we used to, I used to make films, like with my camcorder. Please tell me you've got some of those. Do you know what? Find I had, them. I had them, and my sister's daughter lent them to somebody, and they lost it. All my old films, all my old footage, so we're never going to get oh, them again. Do you remember them? I went all over trying to find them. What that. sort of yeah, stuff did he make? Nightmare on Wild Street. Yeah. That was uh, me, me and Anthony's house, and he lived on Wild Street. Chucky. <laughs> Chucky one and Chucky two. I drilled my sister's doll in the head with a drill. <laughs> on camera. So I got the doll. She and then got, whacked she, it with a horse she, whip. She, she won't let it in the bedroom again, because I showed her the film and she thought it came alive. Because <laughs> she was disabled as well, my sister. She, she was really frightened of this doll, had you on. She was like, hey. and I had, this, I had this doll, and it had a drill all in its head with all blood coming down its eyes when I made the film. And I just put it back in her room. She was <laughs> Cheating herself and this whole film. How have they let you breed? Well, it was very creative. How have they let you have I was, kids? I was very creative. Like you're the least responsible person. I was very creative with this film. It was good. <laughs> yeah. We can't, he had a Sanyo camcorder and I'd go out making films with it. And I remember it was massive. It was huge. It come out. I got it for Christmas. Christmas. A huge shoulder. Yeah. I absolutely loved it. I got all the kids in it. I don't know how I convinced them all to be in my films. I was like, right, do you want to be in my film? And then it was just two of us, so. Whoever was holding the camera couldn't be in the shot. So it was like just, so it just singles every yeah. time. And, and, and the doll, I had someone controlling the doll. So my mate um, controlled oh, the doll. What else did you make? Chucky 1, Chucky 2, Nightmare you on Wild Street. You used to set fire to all your cars, didn't you? Yeah, you I, 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 shot, each shot, yeah, I used to do stop, start, stop, start filming. So, yeah. I'd, so it, it'd be, uh, things were always getting hurt. So I'd have, I'd have a car come round the corner. It was all in my bedroom. And then this little baby crossing the road and the car just running over and its head coming off. That was that. What was one? Yeah. Why? I don't, it was all my sister. And, and, then, I did, my and then I got my sister's Barbie truck, right? Put loads of paper in the back of it, put Ken in the front and Barbie and set fire to it and threw it down the stairs and filmed it like it was a car crash over a cliff. <laughs> She'd come back and all the, all the Barbie car was melted. Was that hiding in the bathroom? Was that three hours Ken, in the bathroom? Ken looked like he had a stroke. His face was all melted off. All right. <laughs> Imagine me as a brother. Awful. I don't want him. And, and what about when I pissed in Arjuan's mouth? I've just remembered that. I've just remembered that. Oh, God. I was only a little boy, but that's why... I mean, did you I... don't remember it, I told you about it. But why did I do that? I feel she like... She was asleep and I She's the best witness for the defence, by the way. My lord, he was only a little boy. I, it was true, I was only a little, but why was did I do that? Was this around Auntie Anne time? Auntie no, Anne I don't Gates. know. He was, he was only a little, weren't he, in drama? I think he just thought... I think it was like a devilment. She was asleep with her she mouth open, mouth and, and, she, and then she was gargling. It's terrible. I know, I know, I, I know. I was a little boy. Mum, do you remember she had all her hair was all wet, wasn't it? Yeah. It's terrible. It's a true story, though, isn't it, Mum? Why did I do that? Why did you do I that? I don't know. I was a little boy. I Stop <laughs> saying that. <laughs> that doesn't change anything. And you stop saying it, too. <laughs> he was a little boy. I was a little boy once. I didn't go pissing into every orifice <laughs> I could see open. <laughs> I didn't. So oh, my granddad's snoring. Look at him having a kip. I wonder if I can get his nostrils. I no. think he, was, he looked round and Joe was asleep. And she was, you know, a mouth. So he was in his devilment. Yeah, it but, but don't, say, don't say devilment like that. Like it's a condition. <laughs> like, go, he was just, it wasn't his fault. It was devilment. <laughs> That's him. Terrible. Yes. I, I must have had a little glitch somewhere. <laughs> you reckon? Yeah, I think, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a funny. little glitch. <laughs> well, he's he's talked a lot of, on the podcast about school and what he was like at school. Yeah. And um, it sounds like I'm going to take the piss, but I'm not. He's talked about like you didn't get on with school, and and you, before we go into this, you talked about like being a kid now or being a kid then. I think mm. one of the things that's better, as I understand it, I've got no kids, but I think there's there's an understanding now amongst the education system that like the rigid school structure doesn't work for all kids, and there's no. different types of didn't learning work for or whatever, me. which wasn't available, which was not a thing when we were kids. You went to school and that was that, right? Um, but you didn't have the option to have like a different style of learning at school. You did not get on with it. No. As I, you've said many I, a time. No, no, no. What I'd like to ask you is, how did that affect your life? Did you, did you get a lot of phone calls from school? Did you get a lot um, of... I've got, to give, I've got to say one thing. He never played truth from school. Apart from once, uh, well, and his dad found out. He's told me a I couple of stories that, that belie that fact. <laughs> no, no, but dad, it's I, nice that that's what you my think. Dad, my dad caught me. Well, I came back. Do you know, stupid dickhead like me, I wagged it, went to Manchester, right? <clears throat> Not only that, my sister's husband at the time drove past in his van and I waved at him. I went, oh, oh shit. Oh, <laughs> but no. he didn't grasp me up. 
And then I go and I've, I've found this little, uh, do you know when you, you get them pranks like trick shops and magic shops and you could get these little pranks? And I found this one, it was like a cap thing and it folded over and you put it under a cup and then when you lift the cup up it goes bang, right? And I thought, that'll be funny, I'll get someone with that. Brought it home and I, and I did it to me dad and he went, where have you got them from? I went, um... <laughs> <laughs> Have you been to school today, Wayne? <laughs> no. <laughs> just, I couldn't just, even laugh. I, well, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't. Why didn't you wait till after the weekend when you could have bought them? I, I don't week? know. Because I was so excited to get some with these You've pranks. come in, you've gone, oh, I was so I've excited. been in Manchester. I've yeah. pissed in my sister's mouth. <laughs> Stick that on. And the hand, smell that. <laughs> have a bit of hunger <laughs> on the way home. Oh, no. my God. And, uh, school was a weird one for me because I loved school for the fact that I had a laugh with my mates, but I, I couldn't sit there and... Uh, but they sat me at the back of the class with headphones on, I told you. For a yeah. lot of the classes. And the funny thing was, I even failed pissing drama. That's what's stupid, because they thought... Seems believable, to be honest. At dickhead. <laughs> but it was um, because it was a lot of written work and I just hated writing. And, and, and also, what is really funny is that, that they, you know, my drama teacher told me I'd never, meet, I'd never be anything. And I was done a bit of TV work and he obviously didn't like me. I didn't like him. Um, and rather than try and sort of mould my energy, they just... He's just a, he's a pain in the ass, uh, you know, wrote me off. Yeah. Um, and then after I'd left school and I, I had my career a bit, they phoned me up and they said, uh, will you mind giving out the awards at the Did school for the kids? Did you say you can get to fuck? No, I went. Did you? And I told them all the truth, the kids. I said, no. these lot told me I'd never make it. These lot here told me I wouldn't be able to do it, what I'm doing now. So you believe in yourself because if someone tells you you can't do something, you, that should give you the drive to prove them wrong. So they're, they're asking me to stand here today and they're going, you can't say that, I've just said it. Because I thought, this is my opportunity. Because these kids out there that might be like me, that are not academic, that want to do something else with their life, and who's, who's them to say, if you don't tell the line, you're not going to do anything with your life? And then they named an award after me, yeah. the Will Miller Award. I still there. I bet. <laughs> I'm still, that's true. But when you were there on the night going, this shower of shite said I'd never, <laughs> no, amount, said I'd never amount to anything. They're like, quick, scrub his name off the no, award. Jesus it wasn't, Christ. You know, it, wasn't, it wasn't that, it was after that. Mellor's Cafe Award, we'll call it that. <laughs> the school became, became more about performing arts, so it they is, give other... It's like that, man. Exactly, so because of what I did, uh, not just because of that, but the school then opened its arms to people who are not as academic, who want to be in the performing arts or dance, whatever it might be. And then the... Um, they had this award for the highest achiever, and they called it the Will Miller Award. And I thought, it's funny, isn't it? You know what I mean? If, if I'd have not had... If, I, if I'd have been built a different way and listened to them and the doubters and all that, then none of that would have happened. Yeah. So I think it's important sometimes that you've got to go, you know, there's, there's kids out there that are not academic. You was academic, I wasn't. Do Everyone's you know different. I'll ask, I'll ask you a surprisingly serious question now, right? Because you mm. talk about this a lot. You talk about, I don't like reading and this and that and the I other. Don't. And I... You know, usually I, used to read, take, I used to read Viz, that was it. Usually I'll take the piss out of you because that's what we do with each other. Yeah. But since we're talking about that and different ways of learning and whatever, yeah. you talk about not re liking reading a, a lot. People, if, they, if they're severely dyslexic, they, it, I've read it described as like, it's almost like you're trying to look at the letters, but they almost like just swim in front of you. Like you just can't focus mm. on, on the letters in the right order or whatever. I don't think that's what you've described, but is it just like... You just can't focus on it. You just can't concentrate on it. You just mind goes the somewhere else. Concentration levels are not good for reading. I mean, I've, as I say, I've probably read one book and it took me probably a month. What? Because I, I, so I get bored what, after. What I, was the book? I can't remember what it was. It was about some blokes who who, <coughs> who was didn't have much money and they went to rob this bank, um, and and. It's on brand. Yeah. Well, you know. <coughs> anyway, it was just a book Michelle was trying to get me to read. So she said, "Oh, you might like that," but it's just I don't know what it is. My attention span isn't great for things. Yeah. But, like I've said before, I'll go and sit at the side of a bank fishing all day and yeah. not move and love it. So this, I think it's finding what it is that ticks your box. But also, you don't struggle to concentrate, say, at the theatre. Oh, you no, you no. can be completely I'm engaged by that. I'm entertained there. But if you, said, like, if you said, right, read that, God, I'd read two lines and then try and skip it. And but you see, I think there's been a lot of studies, loads of stuff, new, new thinking about this sort of stuff, which is like people process information yeah. Everybody's brain's different, process information differently. You sounds clearly to I mean I'm no expert, but it sounds like you process it like very visually and and I'll really Unless in. it's a script, because that's different because I see images then. Yeah, and also you have to, right? You have to go, yeah. right, let's I've really got to get into this. But I don't I have to learn my scripts before I go in for a reading or a casting. You're a good sight reader, I'm not, and I know that and I knew that from a very young age. When I got um, one of my first early jobs, 
Um, I think it was the commercial I got, Mum. We went for the uh, the Caramac advert, I think it was. And Wait, I what? The Caramac There's advert. There's a Caramac advert. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're Carry great, on. lettuce. What Carry are you doing? I'll, I'll be getting that up. Let's yeah. see. Um, 14, I was, yeah. And um, I'm half and half jumper on. Uh, no, uh, no, I, and your Joe Bloggs jeans. I, I was telling him the other day when we, were, we went on our holiday and I got drunk for the first time and you came to see me and I'm oh, all okay. sick down in half and half jumper. Do you remember, Mum? That was a bath. That was three hours in the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. So I, um, yeah, so I went for this casting and it was for this Caramac commercial. They were trying to pair um, kid, a kid with the parents and all this sort of stuff. And before I went in, all everyone sat outside like good kids. Do, and I knocked on the door and I went, "Is there a script?" And they went, "Yeah." I said, "Come on, can I see it?" <laughs> Amazing. Right. That's so they're all, cool, though. but so I could learn it before I went in. So. I, d I wasn't like this, panicking about reading, but also they'd get to see my face, and I thought that would give me an advantage. Mm. And it did, and I got the job, yeah. and I sort of thought, from that point on, it's, it's not, there's no harm in asking for the script. No. You know. But coming back to your earlier question, which was just a sort of a general question, but it's interesting mm. you keep coming back to it, is it would be better to be a kid now growing up than it will in, yeah. in our day? I think there's every chance that you would have had a different experience now uh, Learning-wise at school, you sort of talk about schools like you just hated it. Um, I didn't hate it. I enjoyed pissing about learning, and having fun. Learning. I enjoyed yeah. PE. You enjoyed football. it. You enjoyed it socially, but it being school, you didn't enjoy what it was meant to do. But I think there's every chance now, growing up in the modern world, there would be a like, right? Well, you learn things differently and process things differently. Maybe so it that's would be. Way to Maybe do it would be. So but that, I think that's progress. Not to saying that I was I was going to still be interested in history and shit because for me. I knew what I wanted to be. I mean, my mum will tell you this, and, and it sounds... But I have told my mum that I was going to do this from, from as long as I can remember. Is that true? Yeah. I'm just going to bail you out from the sentence, not that I'd be interested in history and shit, because... No, you know no, what I'm saying. No, I don't know what you think. <laughs> I know what you think you're saying, but I don't think it's true. You can watch a documentary about... Oh, some, I love that. About, but I, don't, I can't sit and listen and someone go, well, back in the 1800s... But, but, well, you can, if the there was a time but you where can, the black if plague... The documentary, I'm like going if to the documentary is interesting to you, you'll watch it. I can watch it. And you'll come into me and go, oh, my God, I saw this thing that was back yeah. in the 1800s. Yeah, I love that, but this. I can't have someone stand at the front of a classroom and talk to me like that. So, it's a way of teaching. And you're right. So you process learning differently. Yeah, totally and I, right. And I think there's a, totally of, right. there's a lot of uh, like progression in different types of learning these days. So that's one way in which being a kid would have been better for you. Maybe you're in, right. In, in, in <clears> the modern <throat> world. Maybe you're right. But so <clears throat> you never played truant, is what you no. said, which I happen to know no, is absolutely not that, true. So but uh, it's very sweet that that's what you think. <laughs> no, I got yeah. caught. I got. I was shit at it. One thing it was, and also I I'm not a good liar. I get. I got guilt written all over my face, and also I was terrified of my dad. And I thought if he finds out, and that's another good thing as well about in our day. You told me you and Anthony played truant. No, I. He was. He was. I was. I told him to come in school. Oh, and he was okay. off school because after his dad died, maybe he didn't go yeah. to school for ages. And I, and I went and throwing stones at his window, going, Come in school, we'll have a laugh. And he's going, Why? I'm not going to oh, school. No. <laughs> but, um, and me and Matt, so, but we came in to get him, and we were running around the back of the mobiles, pissing about. And that's when the teacher caught us, and then we had to, we, we had to do a page of lines. And then he said, I was in bed. I could have just stayed in. <laughs> yeah. And now I've come no, in, I've and now I've got to sit in detention. Yeah, thanks, Mella. Yeah. No, uh, yeah, it was, uh, there was a time when I, I did a speech at Anthony's. Anthony, for anyone listening, he's, he's like my best mate. I grew up with him from school and still my mate now. And I was with him last night. And, and um, I, I was his best man at his wedding. Uh, and I was saying about the things, and the speech was, went something like this. And I was saying, um, I've known Anthony all, all my life. And um, we've been through a lot together. You know, it was um, when my sister, Joanne, uh, she, she had a, a problem with her heart. And I, I was sat by the phone waiting for the phone to ring, whether she'd survived the operation or not, and Anthony was with me. And I got the phone call, um, and then there was a time when I tried to wag it from school, he was with me. We got caught, but he was by my side. Mm -hmm. um, and there's been so many times where I've been down, but he's been with me. Yeah. And I turned to him and I said, Anthony, I think you're a fucking jinx. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> and, Great. It was, and it was, yeah, and it was, it was just, well, you know, when you've got mates like that, you've been through a lot. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was. Uh... Yeah, I mean, do you know the, the other thing about being a kid nowadays, which I think is harder, is the way the technology is now, even though it's good for kids, I think. The social side is great, but it's also, if you're not popular, it's ten times worse. Like, you now get Explain. people... Well, people now, I've heard, 
of people um, be unfriending people or because they haven't got a lot of followers or if they didn't like a photo or something they put mm -hmm. on them they fall out bullying can be taken home so now bullying can be in yeah, your bedroom you no, no in rest. your house no rest it's in your lap and and i think as well <coughs> as well there's this culture now of how everyone's got to look and so the, the filter situation like you take a picture of yourself and then you spend ages filtering it so it doesn't even look like you anymore mm. and then you think well i can't look like me because I want people to think... When you get those weird, those weird filters now that you get where it's like, here's the perfect version of you, and it just makes you into this yeah. like, flat, weird Disney character. I just, think, I just think it's a weird, self-aware culture that I'm glad I'm not a part of, uh, because I, f I just think it'd have been a lot tougher. I, I, I mean, as I say, some people are always talk about... I mean, my dad talks about the good old days, and I think, that sounds shit, going outside for the piss and the shit in a bit in wooden box. Listen, the other day... We used to go outside to the toilet, the other day, and there'd be spiders and everything, <laughs> yeah, yeah, wooden seats, splinters on your ass. That was better. That doesn't sound better. The other day, we, we caught ourselves. Remember, we were driving, we caught ourselves, and we were listening to... We may even have been listening to the Backstreet Boys. We were singing very loudly along to the Backstreet, to the Backstreet Boys. Boys. And then we turned around <laughs> off the back of the Backstreet Boys, and we went, eh... Music today, it's not what it used to be, is it? I'm like, we've turned into our parents. But at least our parents were saying that about the Rolling Stones. And the we Beatles. were saying that about the Backstreet Boys. Yeah, yeah, I mean, there is, there is, there is all that in there about the good old days and all that. And I think in, sometimes I think it's because life gets very serious when you get older and bills start to happen and you, and you know. And I think when you're a child, you enjoy your childhood so much. Mm. And when you get older, you don't think they're enjoying their childhood because it's not yeah. like you enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah. It's a sense of freedom, I yeah. think. The freedom yeah. suddenly starts to dwindle away, and the magic, at, the magic fades. Children enjoying the childhood in their eyes. Yeah. Oh yeah. As what it is today. Do you think yeah. you know much about your kids? By which I mean, like, I look back now and I'm like, what I was thinking and doing and what I was interested in. My parents had no idea, really, what my internal monologue was like. You know what, what. You know, who yeah, I fancied, I, I, who it's like, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> back in the day, they had no idea I fancied her back in the day. Who? Emma. Oh, yeah, Emma. Since I was 15, we were a drama group together. Oh. Oh, yeah, I got over it. I mean, look at her. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's the cheeky bastard. Got over it by the time I was about 18, but it was there. Yeah, you know. Emma from the Royal Family, who Sheridan played, yeah. is based on her. Oh, really? Yeah. I never knew that. Yeah. Have you ever had dreadlocks? <laughs> no. Yeah, no, so. Uh, yeah, my parents had no idea what was going on in my head, really. Um, and I just wonder if any parents ever really do. I don't know. I've, did, I've you, been... did you feel, I mean, looking back now... We were close, weren't we, as a family? I, close, yeah. I felt I did, but, I mean... Exactly. Yeah. Sometimes I was a little too close, mother. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and Auntie Anne. <laughs> oh, Auntie Anne, Auntie Anne. Auntie. she got the full beans. <laughs> I remember we had four older sisters, yeah. so he was son to every one of us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We were his son. And I, I well, think... his sisters, even Cheryl now will say, I saw him. It surprises me, yeah. actually, that he's not more... Camp? Wasn't more yeah, wasn't more... <laughs> you're very camp, though. <laughs> that he wasn't more molly-coddled molly -coddled as a kid. Like, we'd like... I don't think he was allowed to be molly-coddled. Well, Bill was, Bill was like... My dad took over, Bill yeah. was like a I mean, like saw, When I came along, going. my dad was like, right, Shirley, I'll sort him out. You, you, you saw the girls <laughs> yeah, out. Yeah. So the girls, they'd be doing Morris dancing, but I'd be in the back, background doing the Morris <laughs> dancing as well. <laughs> was, a second, yeah, I still know the routine, I still do it, honestly. No, not let's, with my knees. Let's see not it. with my knees. Yeah. But we, uh, no, um, yeah, and, and also, you know, I think that is why, in a way, not, not the reason why, because I think I was always going to be who I was going to be, but why I sort of always felt a centre of attention and performing all the time, because I was. You know what I mean? Being the youngest, you get a lot of attention. I'm being six years between me and the youngest. It was all, wherever I was, it was like, right, and I'll be in the middle dancing, I'll be to on the stage. Fair, I wanted to perform I did, yeah. yeah. I did. To be fair, I, got, I was the same, because yeah. I, w I was the youngest, and then um, uh, my, my gran, particularly, she was like really involved in like, her, her local theatre and all that. Yeah. And every time I was around there, she was like, oh, you know, tell your jokes or show me yeah. this. And yeah. she, everything I said, she was like, oh, you're so funny. I, I wasn't. You're hilarious. Like, and you just get that, like, that gives you the bug. Yeah. Don't it? That's where you first get it going. Oh, this is great. All this attention. So I must have been so loud and precocious when I was a kid. I'm yeah. one of eight children, so you can imagine his aunties and uncles and cousins. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Was one of eight children, so right. Imagine, Big family. Yeah, yeah. Big whatever family. we had a family do, it was Will. Come on, do you? Come on, do you, Michael Jackson, Jackson Will, in the middle? Will, <laughs> Will, have you got a pencil? <laughs> Will, show <laughs> that trick you do with that pencil. <laughs> and that's what it was like. 
Are you related to Miller Estate Agents, by the way? We no. keep driving past it going, that must be part of your family. No, though. it's not. No. That's a shame, isn't it? It's Could she? Sad, but it's not. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. I, t- I tell you what is nice, though, you know what I mean? That we've been around here most of our lives, you know what I mean, as a, as a family. And to be in this cafe now, uh, it's a family business. We're still part of the community. And it's just nice well, to come home. Well, it's actually been lovely to, to talk about your childhood in, in your childhood area. Well, yeah, that's why with I... With your mum as well. Yeah, with your mum. You know how we were like, we're not having a guest today. Turns out we've got the best one we've had. My mother. <laughs> yeah. yeah, talking about the shitler. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, no, yeah. It's, uh, it was a great, great... One, one la- so one last what? question, right? We'll call it a day. Would you... Well, I want to show you the Romney Forum, so we'll go up and see All that. All right, well, one yeah. last question, and we'll go up and have a look at the theatre, yeah. right? Is there anything, is there anything that you'd change? Not necessarily because you don't want to kind of be disloyal to the memory of your childhood, right? So not anything, not necessarily, that, but like, is there anything, is there one incident that you wish you hadn't done? Is there what, like, is there anything you could go back, if you had your time again, you'd do differently from your childhood? Childhood, probably not. Um, it's because I loved Poor it. Hold on, <laughs> yeah, a lot of, She's yeah. getting it whatever, isn't she? <laughs> yeah. I suppose I wouldn't have pissed in my sister's mouth. I think that's quite a, that would, you know, I, I, was, I was a little boy, like my mum said, so that's not a nice thing, is it? It's not a nice memory for, for her. Um, and I suppose that's not a good thing. But um, that, I, I, was, I, I believed I was a free, fun, I had loads of stuff to do. I was boxing from a very young age. My dad took me down there and, you know, and, uh, and we had a great family. We was, there was always something. And like we saw, we didn't have a lot of money. We didn't need it because yeah. we had no one on the street. We were all the same. Yeah. And, and my dad could work a miracle with the electric meter. <laughs> no one paid for electric. <laughs> he, he was bent, honestly, my dad. <laughs> He could fix anything, and, he, and my, um, our house magically didn't cost nothing to run, <laughs> and everyone else in the street as well. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it was, um, there was always something happening, and there was, all, uh, as I say, when you have a big family, um, yeah, it, we, you didn't need each other, all you needed was each other. Yeah. It was a loving family, even though we, you know... He was pissing in his sister's mouth. A very close family. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so... Out playing. I mean, I remember your dad cutting all the girls' hair because Purdy come out. Remember Purdy out of the event? Yeah, you? yeah. Well, she had a haircut. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah. And Joanna Lumley, right? Yeah, mm. yeah. He, uh, did he cut your show first? Yeah. Cut her hair to, to Purdy, then all her friends said, Mr. Mel, will you cut my hair? How did he know how to cut hair? He didn't. He didn't. He just, did you just, do it with a pair of kitchen scissors? He did it with scissors, but he learned how to do it, and then all the, the little girls wanted the Purdy, so they used to come. So Unbelievable. The parents say, Here's the money, go and have a hair, Amazing. So one so thing though about what, how, how much I love fishing, I used to go fishing with my dad a lot, and it's surprising I love it because if I did anything wrong, my dad used to hit me over the head with the fishing rod <laughs> from two pegs up. He'd be fucking whacking. So if I dropped the bait box, he'd be like, shit, if he sees that. He'd be like, have you, is this you? Is this you? And they'd be like, what's he doing with that rod? He'd be like, oh, <laughs> whacking me, whacking me over the head with it. So, you know, he kept me in line. Oh, he definitely kept you in line. And yeah. I was a pain in the ass because I'd go fishing with him and I'd cast in like that. And then they'd be, he'd be like, will you sit down and have the rod rest? I'd be fencing the bushes. I'd be fucking, <laughs> <laughs> right. I was literally like, what did my dad say? A fart in a colander? What did that yeah. even mean? I still don't know what that means. You couldn't be kept, couldn't be kept in. Surely. I suppose. It's full of holes, isn't it? All right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, what, yeah. Um, what was I going to say? Do you want to tell the story that you told me last night? What? Or should we save it for another time about the first time when you were boxing, mm. when you suddenly went, oh, this isn't for me. Oh, yeah, with that ginger kid. Yeah. Remember, I was fighting the gingers after yeah, that month. He was fighting the ginger kids. Well, I, w- I, went into, I went into boxing and, then, and uh, they said, Will, do you want to have a spa? And I was like, yeah. And then this, this new kid came in and he obviously he wanted to see what he was like. And I'd been going for a while, and I was good, you know what I mean? Um, and then... I never I, lost, you said, had it all your own I, I, way. People I, I, coming yeah, to the ring going, I was yeah, really take good. That, take that. And I was fighting a lot bigger kids in the gym, because I was the small, one of the smallest. Anyway, this, this, this lad here, I'll never forget, he had ginger, and it was the first sort of... I don't know why it made a difference, but this is why. And anyway, I hit this kid, and he was, he was gone. He was falling back onto the ropes, and I was hitting with a perler. Everyone went, ooh! And I just walked off thinking, well, that's the end of that. Anyway, Vinny jumped in to stop it. It was a boxing uh, coach, Vinny Ranson. And the bloke went, no, I'm all right, carry on. But the ginger kid was like, no, no, no. I'm all right, I'm all right. He's hit me. And then he came back at me and he gave me a right good fight. And he had an ulcer in my mouth. My mouth was all swollen up and he... And I'd had it all my own way before that, and then I realised boxing's hard. And then... (laughs) And and this kid... This kid, yeah, and and, um, afterwards, I thought, I'll never want to fight a ginger kid again. They're hard. Thinking all gingers are the same. (laughs) And I remember walking out the ring and I was went, went mad at my dad because I was fuming that 
I'd, I'd been hit quite a few times and I was a bit... Yeah, your adrenaline's had, up and you're emotional. And I didn't have a gum shield, so I went mad at my dad. It's your fault I didn't have a gum shield. And he smacked me right across the face. Who are you talking to in front of everyone? Really? Well, yeah, you, that's the thing is about my dad. He made sure I knew where I stood. <laughs> and that's what I'm saying in them days. It was like, you eat you, 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 you your kids then, keep, you, keep them in line. And, and yeah, he was strict, my dad, with me. But, yeah. but that's another story whether it's right to not chastise your children or yeah exactly oh, at the end of the day new. I'll tell you one thing I did do I had fear of him and it meant I never got into trouble with the police I never went out drinking and doing drugs and all that shit I didn't hang around and I couldn't even go on the rocks here what are you allowed on that what do you mean in case people were sniffing glue I told you when we drove <laughs> well remember the rocks there's a thing there's a shop a row of shops and it was called the rocks and there was a bench on it and we'd have to well, just, well, we just drove past, yeah, there's, like, there's like four boulders yeah, by some benches. Yeah, that's it. call it the rocks. The rocks. Yeah, we'd have right. to if I ever see you on them rocks, I'll kill you. Why? Because he said glue sniffers go there. <laughs> Did you hear that? It's glue it's sniffers, it's true. He said they sniff glue around there. And, and I was like, what? So even I couldn't even be seen, so I had to walk I around the idea it. I if he didn't go, hey, if you ever sniff glue on those rocks, no, you're in trouble. Allowed, yeah, you just weren't allowed on them. No, don't hang around there. His friend lived in the, the flats there. Harry the Poole. And he said, Harry Poole's keeping his eye open for you. I find out you've been on them That's what I'm saying. So it was like, a, and, and I wouldn't change that. I mean, because that fear kept me on the straight and narrow. And uh, and you know, and you know, I think sometimes you need you need that discipline. What do you think keeps Jaden and Renee on the straight and narrow? I think I know the it's answer. It's not me. And I think the answer is Michelle. Well, <laughs> yeah, Michelle's a strict one in our house compared to me. He I, said. He said. I can't discipline him. I just I, try and be the fun one. She. I, he's always like, wait till your mum gets home. But it's not. It's not that. It's, do you know what it is? Is I, 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 have, I have a lot of riddle with guilt all the time, and I don't know why. I, In what way? Well, that's interesting. You've never said guilt that to me before. Because it's weird. I don't know what it is. It's like, um, I, hate, I hate seeing my kids upset. I hate anything innocent being upset. Just, Any kid, it kills me. I was a very protective person when I was at school and stuff, and if anybody was being bullied, I, I wouldn't have it. And my dad always would say to me, if I, if I ever find out you're bullied, and I, and I was never into, but I hated bullies. And, and with kids, that's the innocence, I think, and I, and I hate... So, like, I have to tell them off, and I do shout at them, but then I'll sit downstairs and I'll think, I feel terrible, I shouted at them. Really? Even if they've done something wrong, and I'll have to go upstairs and apologise, and I'll say, listen, you don't understand now why I... Because I, sometimes I fly off the handle, I'll shout, and, um, and, and then I'll have to admit, I have to go and sort it, because I can't sleep on that, or I can't leave it. And, and I think it's because I work, work away a lot, and I worked away a lot when they were younger. I was filming away. I missed quite a bit of time with them, and... Uh, so I try to now, I don't want to come home and then go, right, you do this, do that. I, I want to be fun dad. But it's not, it doesn't help Michelle, because she's like, I'm trying to be disciplined here. You yeah. come home and go, hey, do you want some sweets? Let's go out here. <laughs> so it is tough being a parent. It's hard, it's a juggling match, you know what I mean? You've got to make, get the right balance. But your dad used to do that to you. He did, he used to... He used to shout at you and you'd send you up to your room. I used to lie there, I back. used to lie there yeah. waiting. Look, I didn't really want to upset you. Really? Yeah. I, I said that at the time when, when he passed away, we did yeah, the podcast. Yeah, I, I was, I used to lie in bed and he'd tell me off, and he'd tell me off, or he'd hit me or something, and I'd lie in bed waiting for him, because I knew he'd come up, and I couldn't sleep until he did, and he just ruffled me hair and he'd go, "Sorry, son," and then I'd go, I "Can sleep now." Mm -hmm. Can't talk about that because I'm getting upset now. I know. So let's not talk. Show Shall we go upstairs and check out let's your, there, your childhood <laughs> theatre debut? Let's go and see the theatre. Come on, mate. What well, a pleasure <laughs> to be here in your. Uh, in your old stomping ground. Hey, hey, Mellor's, nice Mellor's cafe. Mellor's cafe. <laughs> Can we sign up? Mellor's cafe. Hey, that was my mother as well, everybody. Yeah. That was Shirley Thanks, Mellor. Shirley. Cheers, Shirley. Shirley, Shirley Mellor, podcast, ladies and gentlemen. Podcast debut for Shirley Mellor. <laughs> the, po the future podcast queen, Shirley Mellor. Thanks, Shirley.